All right, so last time we talked about how to simplify radicals and then how to um, multiply two one term, one radical term, one term radical expressions and simplify them. So <clears throat> we want to get into some other operations with radical expressions today. Uh, talk about adding, subtracting, uh, and then a little bit more complicated multiplying as far as more terms are involved. Okay. Um, first and foremost, if we're going to add and subtract, the only way you can add and subtract radicals is if they are like terms. And uh, in this way, they're a lot like variables, right? You can't add um, a 2x and a 3y, right? They're not like terms because they have different variables. Radical expressions, radical terms, need to have the same radicand. Right, so radical square root of 6, square root of 5 are not the same radicand, so they're not like terms. But six, radical 6, radical 6 are like terms because they have the same radicand, so we can add those or subtract those. And when you're adding and subtracting, <coughs> then again, it's kind of like when you have like terms with variables, you simply add the coefficients. Well, same thing here, when you have like radical terms, you just add what would be the coefficients, the numbers out in front. So that would be a 1 in front of the first radical 6 and then a 3 there. So 1 plus 3 is 4, so you get 4 square root of 6. And same thing if you subtract. There's a 1 out front here. If you subtract 1 radical 6 minus 3 radical 6, you just subtract the numbers on the outside and get negative 2 radical 6. You leave the radicands alone. You don't do anything with those. Okay. Just like those x's. You don't do anything with those x's. You just add the coefficients and leave the x's alone. Okay? So, um, some quick examples. 6 square root of 11 plus 9 square root of 11. Those are like terms because the radicands are the same. So we're just going to add the coefficients and get 15 square root of 11. Okay? Here, are these guys like terms? Well, hopefully you're saying yes, because the radicands are the same. <coughs> and so we simply subtract the numbers on the outside. 1 minus 4 is ne or sorry, 1 minus 4. <laughs> sorry to say it again. 1 minus 5 is negative 4, and the radicand stays the same. So negative 4 radical 3. Okay. How about here? Like terms? Hopefully you're saying yes. So then what would you get when you combine these like terms? Hopefully you're saying negative 1 square root of 2. And very often you won't see us write the 1. So just negative square root of 2. <coughs> okay. <coughs> now, how about these guys? Are these guys like terms? No, and the answer is no, right? The radicands are not the same. So what we do is we simplify either radicand. Sometimes you guys simplify both, but simplify either one of them. Cross your fingers and hope that you get like terms when you're done, because that might happen. For example, if I wanted to simplify the square root of 12, I've got to find that perfect square factor. And I know that 4 will go into 12, so 4 times 3 would be inside the radical there. The square root of 4 is 2. So now we go 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 radical 3 is what you'd end up with. Okay? So there you go. We simplified the square root of 12, and lo and behold, we got like terms. So now we can combine them. Okay? Try here. These are obviously not like terms. Try to simplify and see if you get like terms, and if you do, combine them. Okay, hopefully you got 5 square root of 7. Okay, again, we simplify the 28 by factoring out a perfect square factor of 4. So 4 times 7 would be in your radicand. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 times 2. And when you square root the 4 to get 2, the 2 has to come right out front the radical here and get multiplied into that 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then now we got like terms because the radicands are 7s. 
They're both the same, and uh, we just add the numbers on the outside. 1 plus 4 is 5. Okay. Now, here's a situation where you have to simplify both radicals. <clears throat> so simplify those guys and see what you come up with. Try to combine like terms if you can. <clears throat> and hopefully your work looks something like this. Right? So 16 will break down into, or sorry, 32 will break down into 16 times 2. Square root of 16 is 4, so we bring the 4 out in front of the first one. 18 will break down into 9 times 2. Square root of 9 is 3, so you bring a 3 out front. Get 4 times 3 is 12, so then you have like terms that you can add together. Okay? Now, multiplying. So, like I said before, we've, we have multiplied two radical expressions that had just um, one term. Right, one term, one term. Two radical ten and three radical five, they're just one term. They're together. They're they're all part of one big term. Okay? Now, if we want to start multiplying multiple terms, like here, we have a one term, square root of ten, times a two term radical expression, which is radical six plus three. Well, hopefully no surprise is that Um, what we do is do what we feel like we should do any time a number sitting outside of parentheses, and that is distribute. Okay, remember back to the last module, the last lesson, that when you multiply two radicals together, you simply multiply the outside numbers and they stay outside, and then you multiply the inside numbers and they stay inside. So here, since 10 and 6 are both inside the radical, we'd go 10 times 6 and get the square root of 60. In the second term, 3 is outside of a radical, so 3 stays outside. There's nothing to multiply the 3 by, or if you prefer, there's a 1 sitting outside this radical, so 3 times 1 is 3. There's nothing to multiply the 10 with because there's not another radical over there, so it just stays 3, so it just stays radical 10, so we get the square root of 60 plus 3 square root of 10. Now we'd want to try to, again, simplify these radicands and see if we get like terms, because right now they're not. So 60 we can break down into 4 times 15. The square root of 4 is 2, so 2 comes out front. And then uh, if we get 2 square root of 15 plus 3 square root of 10, those are not like terms, so we can't combine them, and so we're done. Okay. Try this guy and see what you come up with. And you should come up with this. <clears throat> uh, so 3 times 2. So the first distributing terms here, 3 times 2. So 3 on the outside of the radical, 2 on the outside of the radical. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 and 6 are both inside, so 2 times 6 is 12. So we get 6 radical 12. And then 3 square root of 2 times 5. 5 and 3 on the out, are on the outside, so 5 times 3 is 15. There's nothing to multiply the radical 2 by, so it just stays square root of 2. Not like terms, so we have to break down the 12. 12 will break down to 4 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 comes out front. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 square root of 3 plus 15 square root of 2. We still don't have like terms, so we're done there. We can't combine them. Okay? Now, <clears throat> in a situation where we have two binomials, basically, so two two-term radical expressions, okay? Uh, again, if these were variables, then hopefully we would start to think we need to FOIL that. Well, same thing here. We're going to FOIL these two expressions. Um, and so we'll go first, square root of 6 times square root of 6. The 6's are both inside the radical, so you get the square root of 36. And then out here, 6 and 3 are both inside the radical, so you multiply those guys together. 6 times 3 is 18. Your insides, 3 and 6 are inside the radical, so 6 times 3 is 18. Negative 2 and 1 are outside the radical, so you get negative 2. And then your lasts, 
3 times 3 is 9 inside the radical, so it's square root of 9. And 1 times negative 2 are outside, so you get negative 2 on the outside. And now we simplify. Well, first of all, these two guys are like terms, so we can go ahead and add those. The square root of 36 is just 6. So your like terms, 1 plus negative 2 gives you negative 1, so it's negative square root of 18. The square root of 9 is 3, so we're going to pull a 3 out here with the 2 and get negative 2 times 3. So you get 6 minus the square root of 18 minus 6. Well, 6 minus 6 is 0, and we're left with this negative square root of 18. Well, we can break down negative, or sorry, we can break down 18 into 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So 3 comes outside, 2 stays inside, and there we've simplified. So when you multiply those two binomials together, you get one term negative 3 square root of 2. Now, that won't happen all the time, but it did happen here. Okay? <clears throat> Number 10, um, negative, or sorry, square root of 11 minus 2 squared. There is a trick to this. You have to go back to squaring binomials to pick it up, but um, it, if you don't remember the trick, that's fine. Just write these two binomials down next to each other or write this one that binomial down next to itself because when you square something you're multiplying it by itself. And then we're back to foiling. First, 11 times 11 inside the radical gives you the square root of 121. Radical 11 times negative 2. Negative 2 outside, 11 inside, you get negative 2 square root of 11. Inside here, same thing, negative 2 is outside, square root of 11 is inside or 11 is inside, so you get negative 2 square root of 11. The negative 2 and negative 2 is positive 4. The square root of 121 is 11. You've got two like terms here that we can combine and get negative 4 square root of 11. And then you get plus 4 out here. Well, 11 plus 4 is 15. And there you go, 15 minus 4 square root of 11. You cannot combine these like terms, these, sorry, you cannot combine these two terms because they're not like terms. This guy has a radical 11, this guy does not. So you're not going to combine the 15 and the negative 4. You're just going to leave it alone. It's as far as we can go. Okay? All right. That gets us to also talking about simplifying from the quadratic formula. And number 11 comes exactly from the quadratic formula, which is neg opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so this has come from that. <coughs> Last chapter, we had you guys just square root the 24, get a decimal, and start working through a decimal answer. Now we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to try to simplify the radical and simplify the fraction at the same time. So how does that work? Well, we're going to reduce this radical by breaking it down, right? So 24, we can break down into 4 times 6. The square root of 4 is 2. So we get 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 6 all over 2. Okay? 